an exclusive production of the West Windsor Plainsboro Advanced Broadcasting Program. You're watching WWPH TV. Shao, and this is the True Serum. The West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School District has educated several notable athletes. Among the alumni is High School North Class of 2007 graduate Rebecca Sony, who is known for her swimming achievements. During the 2008 Beijing Olympics, she set the world record for the 200 meter breaststroke. She followed it up in 2012 in London by breaking her own record and along the way taking home two more gold medals. Head on a similar path are former Knights track and cross country runners Jim and Joe Rosa. The Rosa brothers graduated from North in 2011 and attended Stanford University to run for the Cardinals track team. They still thank their coach Brian Gold for training and supporting them throughout high school. WWPH TV reporter City Sunder takes a look back at Jim and Joe Rosa during their Northern Night days. Philosophy is the way life is lived. It is the guiding principle that allows people to carve out their own distinct paths throughout time. Since 1973, thousands of athletes have graduated from the West Windsor Plainsboro School District. Many have poured all of their physical and mental strength into their sport. Two of the truly elite are Jim and Joe Rosa, who have created an identity out of their passion. For the twin brothers, running isn't just an after-school sport. It is a life philosophy. Year-long athletes involved in both cross-country and track, the Rosas have made running their life dedication. Such passion has resulted in national recognition since early in their high school careers, shattering the country's indoor track record in 2009, placing in the top three at cross-country nationals, setting a historic sub-15 time at home, Dell. Joe says it all began with a change in their outlook. Once we got to the high school and uh, Coach Gould taught us the value of hard work and uh, ever since we got here, we just have been working a lot harder than we did in middle school, and I think it's paid off. The Rosas believe that the concept of team has motivated them to achieve at higher standards. Having been a part of a very tight-knit group since their freshman year of high school, the indelible relationships they formed with their fellow runners has motivated them to work harder for their teammates than for themselves. Uh, maybe some guy won't have a really good uh, week of practicing and all that, but then when they get to the meet, they know they're doing it for their team, and uh, it helps them do what they want to do. Jim and Joe recognize that Coach Gold has played a greater role in their lives than just a high school sports coach. Jim says Gold is more of a life mentor, teaching the brothers values that go beyond the track. During practice, he always gives us talks about like running, mostly, but he also teaches us lessons that, that go like beyond running, like teaches you lessons about life that I don't think many other people like many other coaches have like had as big of an influence on like every aspect of like the team's life as he has. Make every day your masterpiece because you can control that. Make every day your masterpiece because you can control that. What does that mean?
You're going to succeed in anything. You, you got to do the work, right? And uh, they have um, tremendous work ethic, and they, um, and I think the level that they train at and the work that they do is is above just about every other uh, you know, cross country track runner in, in the country. Like Coach Gould, the Rosas teammates believe their achievements reflect their intensive practice. All state runner Casey Dalrymple says the Rosa success is deeply rooted in their work ethic. First of all, when they're out on the course or when they're on the track, it's not a question of how fast they're going. They're going fast, no matter what, and there's, there's no stopping them. And they understand that if they want to get better, they need to go fast and they need to work hard. And also, outside of when we're not at practice, they're you know constantly eating right, they're finding out new core exercises, and they're just... More than anything else is hard, just as cliche as it sounds, it's just hard work and dedication. Being twins, competitiveness has constantly propelled each of the brothers to outdo the other since they were kids. From being the first to open Christmas presents to racing each other in the family pool, the boys have constantly tried since a young age to beat out the other. But now, as the top seeded high school runners in America, the Rosas are neck deep in brotherly competition. I hate to lose to Jim anytime he's beating me in a race. I, I get pretty mad, so I'll like sprint in front of him or do something that I know will uh, try and drop him. And uh, at, if I at home too, if I like see him doing like push-ups or something, I'll I'll go into my room and start doing push-ups just because I don't want him to outwork me or anything like that. Outside of school, the people who have most observed the boys grow not just as runners, but also as individuals, are their parents. The brother's father, Lawrence Rosa, says Jim and Joe's humility when they pulled back during the home stretch of the Mercer County Championships to give teammate John Squarey the win brings him the most pride. I think the happiest, happiest uh, that I ever was was looking at the back of the Trentonian paper and seeing Jim and Joe with uh, John Squarey in the middle and uh, after he won the, the Mercer County Cross Country Championship and uh, my boys were perfect gentlemen. They were, uh, they were good teammates and I'm probably proudest of, of that moment uh, of all of the times. I'm, I'm very proud of those boys. I mean, they're great, they're great boys. They're, they're, they're growing into, into wonderful young men, in my, in my uh, estimation. Yeah. I think they have their head together. I think that they uh, know that they have a lot of work, hard work ahead of them. I know that they, that they know that they've been uh, pretty fortunate in all of the, the good comments that have come to them and, uh, and hopefully they will now put them to good use, uh, make better of themselves and then uh, be productive. We've been blessed. The Rosa brothers have made their mark in West Windsor Plainsboro as record-shattering, nationally ranked runners. But the twins stand for something beyond their success on the track. They embody relentless dedication and drive and the concept of never settling for anything. And in that sense, the brothers have created an identity out of their passion. In the words of one of their favorite runners, Steve Prefontaine, Jim and Joe understand that to give anything less than their best is to sacrifice the gift. This has been Sidney Sunder for WWPH-TV. You're back on the Truth Serum. The condition of our environment continues to be a hot topic. Pollution and global warming are major concerns around the world. Cars and trains contribute greatly to the problem because they release high amounts of carbon dioxide that heat up the atmosphere. 
With increasing fears about our impact on future generations, many organizations have come together to teach local citizens how to keep the air clean. West Windsor Plainsboro specifically has been searching for ways to reduce the pollution created by vehicles in the area. WWPH TV reporter Tim O'Connor explores the options the town has come up with to improve the environment. Rising sea levels, the loss of the Arctic, animal extinction, complete annihilation of all life. Many consequences of environmental neglect have been talked about in the past, but many people doubt that humans have any involvement in avoiding these fates. However, in 2007, the International Panel on Climate Change stated that the warming of planet Earth was very likely due to the observed increase in human greenhouse gas concentrations. Global warming and environmental issues have been discussed as worldwide and national problems, but it has been said time and time again that they must be addressed at a local level. But what can residents of West Windsor and Plainsboro do to solve these national problems? The United States is by far the country with the largest amount of CO2 emissions, most of which comes from automobiles. The West Windsor Plainsboro area is constantly overflowing with traffic, mainly because of the Princeton Junction train station at West Windsor. The executive behind a redevelopment project for the train station, Robert Hillier, realizes that this huge car volume is a problem. Right now, there are 7,000 people in the morning and 7,000 people in the evening coming through that train station. That's what's in the business known as 14,000 trips. It's huge. However, Hillier was hopeful that his company's plan would start to alleviate some of this traffic flow. Then we're going to have a bunch of people, don't know how many yet, live at the Transit Village. Those will most likely be people who work in New York or work in New Brunswick or work in Philadelphia. And they don't need a car. Obviously, the redevelopment will not eliminate all traffic. Some groups, such as newly licensed teenage drivers, put little thought into restricting the amount that they drive. Yeah, well, when I get my license, I probably won't put any limits on myself, driving-wise. The only limits to how far I drive my car would be how much money I have to pay for gas. I do not put any limits on myself. I drive, whether it's around the block or a couple miles away. But many of these students would be willing to cut down on their driving if they were presented with facts. If I had enough information about it and I knew like how much would be good for the environment, I would do as much as I could. I mean, because I know I... People here, like, they overuse things a lot. Like. Yeah, I would, because, you know, I don't want to be the only one destroying the world. Environmental science teacher Christina Suska says students can do a variety of things to do their part in slowing the warming cycle. I think there's a lot of things starting at home, starting in school, getting involved, um, maybe controlling the amount of waste they produce is pretty huge, carpooling, turning off the water when they brush their teeth, in between um, reducing the amount of packaging they buy, recycling where they can, getting involved is probably the biggest thing they could do. Suska stressed that doing the little things will help solve this big problem and hopefully avoid the end of the world for a while. This has been Tim O'Connor for WWPH TV. West Windsor Plainsboro is leaving a significant mark on the world. Promising alumni such as Jim and Joe Rosa leave the district only to become more successful in their later endeavors. On another note, WWP is contributing to a better future by making the air and environment cleaner. And with that, the true serum has run out. This has been Ruby Shao for WWPH TV. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Aisha.
Trish Menon. And I'm Shruti Marate. And welcome to Tales from Grover's Mill. This episode of WWPH-TV's movie show focuses on relationships. The film we'll be viewing today highlights how emotions can change everything. The movie deals with jealousy and miscommunication between characters. The Friend, directed by Priyanka Tilve, brings to mind the old saying, two's company, three's a crowd.
is the friend portrays the importance of being honest and open with your loved one. Emotions like jealousy are very common in a relationship, but it's something you should be able to talk about with your partner. And that's been Tales from Grover's Mill. Tune in next time with more movies from our advanced broadcast writing students. I'm Shruti Marate. And I'm Aish Benin. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon on WWPH TV. From the West Windsor Plainsboro High School Studios, it's Sneak Peek, the TV show that lets viewers sample the type of programming featured on the district's own student-run radio station, 107.9 FM.
Hi, you're listening to 17.9 FM. I'm Marie Amantha. And I'm Ruby Shao. And we're going to have uh, Shreya Sang in with us. And we're going to be talking about why I want to move to Greece. Like, I'm definitely moving there. Like, oh my god, forget WWP. It's totally going to Greece. I think you should stay here because of the extended day program, which we will also be discussing during our show. <laughs> and interesting pets. Those yes. are pretty cool. Some of them are really weird. And then we'll also be talking about viewpoints. And I'm going to own Ruby at Game Break today. So definitely stay tuned for that. But, okay, first off, like, cupcakes in WWP are the best. Like, Sugar and Sunshine Bakery. You're sitting in the Plainsboro Library, and you're like, oh my god, I'm so depressed. I don't want to be studying. And then you go, and you have a nice buttercream frosting cupcake, and you're like, yes, yeah, man, all is good in the world. And, like, everything's just better. Well, you can't always be studying, so I think you should instead take a little walk in the West Windsor Farmer's Market on Saturdays and check out Sweetly Spirited Cupcakes, because they're this online company that's based out of Prince of Junction. So you get, like, specialty cupcakes. Cupcakes. Fancy, but I'll, I'm gonna stick with my buttercream frosting. That's some good stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can also try like Ben Spoon. They have like mini ben buttercream cupcakes, but like, come on, you gotta have bigger is better. And speaking of bigger things, how about we check out some big countries in our game break coming up next? Game break. <laughs> called Guess the Country. I'll give you guys the city and you have to guess which country it's in. Alright, first up, Callista. Is it in Russia, Hungary, Bulgaria, or the Netherlands? <gasps> this one is in Bulgaria. I know this because I read it on Wikipedia. Girl, you did, you did not just do that. It is definitely the Netherlands. Oh my gosh. Ruby got this point. Alright, Andrew is in Iraq, France, North Korea, or Indonesia? <laughs> Indonesia, 100%. No, this one's in North Korea. Alright, it's again Ruby. Yay! Wagga Wagga is in England, Scotland, Indonesia, or Australia? Australia. Australia? No, yeah, this no. is like Scottish sounding. No, I mean, it sounds like Wagga Wagga, eh, eh, eh. Which Waka. is Africa. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Same thing. And Rita no. got the point. It's two yeah. to one. Alright, Vientiane, is it in France, Laos, Ireland, or Turkey? This one has got to be in Laos. No, it's Kira, it's definitely France. Like, you can never pronounce anything that's French. Point definitely to France. Ruby. Cologne, <laughs> Germany, France, Morocco, or America? Germany, 100%. No, this one is France because I take French and you can say, like, Cologne. It's, like, very French sounding. Nah. It's 32, the point to Marita. Constantine, is it in Turkey, Israel, Algeria, or Spain? Algeria. Um, 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 Turkey, because it's like Constantinople. No. 33, we got a tie. Alright, Henderson is in America, Scotland, Singapore, or Australia? Uh, Scotland. Singapore. Singapore, that's ridiculous. It's definitely Singapore. Point to Marita. <gasps> Jancy, is it in Italy, Australia, or Wales? Uh, I'm gonna or go wait, with... I forgot one, it's or France. Oh. Okay, yeah, okay, France, because she forgot that one. It's definitely France. Oh, well, good tactic there. Uh, Wales. Alright, the winner is Amrita, it's in France, 5-3, to three, and that's the end of our game break. The South, united with the North, West Windsor, Plainsboro High School Radio, 107.9 FM. West Windsor Plainsboro High School students, bringing the school to you. 107.9 Inside the District. Yeah, that's right. We are inside the district. So one integral program to our district is um, EDP Extended Day Program. And yeah, there are some great like parts of to it. Like it's based on the premise that the administration, the staff, the advisory council, uh, parents and children should work together to develop policies and programs um, to create an edu educationally sound and stimulating environment. That is one heck of a description. Yeah, that's a really flowery. <laughs> but um, yeah, so like it's basically for students whose parents can't pick them up right after school. They can go and like, they get like nutritious snacks, they get like to play outside, it's like fun. And they also get to 
just do a lot of new activities. So you can like even learn some skills by hitting people with dodgeballs in the gym yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. And there's like pony beads, which are always fun. And like there's like lanyard things. And like, oh, let's play tie dye now. And like, oh man. It's and one of my fun. favorite things is how they always change it up. So they have a new activity or multiple activities planned for every day after school. Yeah. And like, oh, oh, oh the food. Can we just talk about the food? They give you like little crackers and like smiley fries. And like, they really know how to cater it to little kids. Because if you gave me like real food at like third grade, I would be like, what? Yeah, I could not even eat it. <laughs> but another thing you get to do at EDP is like just talk to so many people who are yeah. really interesting. And like you like me like you get over your like inhibition of like, oh I don't want to talk to that girl. I don't like talking to people. Because like you just have to. You just have to do it. <laughs> and like, yeah, so that's always fun. And you have to bond through all of your arts and crafts and you Dodge get to bond. everybody's it. Yes, yeah, so you get to do all of this stuff. And I think that even over the like, summer break or spring break, they have some programs for EDP as well. So yeah. that no matter what, you always oh have your go-to group of people. My dad used to like bribe me to go to those with like, oh, I'll buy you Lunchables. And I'd be like, like I wanted to go. Like, it was fun. But like, you know, in second grade, you have to bribe them with everything. So like, <laughs> you get like your little pizza crackers. But I do recommend EDP to everyone, yeah, even if you have to be bribed like I'm Rita. <laughs> but up next, we're going to have a little debate and controversy in our segment called Viewpoints. 107.9 FM Viewpoints. This segment features many debates on current issues. First topic, West Windsor plans for a regional school district is attempting to target new forms of bullying. This is something that I think that schools should definitely be doing because bullying is a serious problem right now. No, but like, okay, these bullying talks aren't addressing the real problem. Like, and it's just like, these presentations are just like a waste of time for the students. Like, they definitely shouldn't be doing them. Well, first of all, they're not even that often, so how can they be a waste of time? And they're really important because you don't want people to be hurt and like, grow up with their self-esteem shattered. But these talks are teaching tolerance, and tolerance isn't the real problem, it's acceptance. You gotta accept people. Second topic, the governor of New Jersey is one of the most powerful in the nation because of his ability to appoint the cabinet and all superior court judges. Well, okay, I think this is really good because in times of crisis, our government can act and they have like the power and they can do it quickly and like that's really important. But come on, that's way too many positions. That's like basically the governor of New Jersey controls everything. No, they're not controlling everything. I'm like, okay, the president of the United States does have the ability to appoint his cabinet of advisors, so like why shouldn't the governor? But he is just somebody who is elected for a few years, and I don't know, it's just too much power for one person to hold. Nah, I mean, the, the, US, the New Jersey Senate does approve all like appointments, so I think there is a check. All right, agree to disagree. Uh, last topic, enrollment at women's colleges has been dropping steadily over the past years. This is terrible because Women's College Coalition official Susan Lennon says that women are still really underrepresented in science, math, technology, engineering, so we need women's colleges to help bridge that gap. But like, okay, less than 2% of women in America want uh, single-sex coll colleges anyway, so like, it's just not right. Like, they should just open up their colleges to everyone. And well, they don't even know what's good for them because they usually pr produce a lot of female leaders and innovators. I know, but they're just sexist. Like, you should just, I think th these like single-sex schools just need to open up to everyone. West Windsor Plainsboro High School Radio. The voices of the future on the air today. 107.9 FM. Pirate Radio, Night Radio, 107.9 FM, The Flash. This is Shreya Singh with the 107.9 FM School and Community Flash. The West Windsor Arts Council is offering beginner to advanced classes. The center runs a variety of courses year-round for all ages. Local thespians can tap into their talent at in Kelsey Theatre. Mercer Kennedy Community College holds open auditions throughout the year for its productions. Plainsboro is posting volunteer opportunities online. Interested residents can go to the township's website for a list of open positions in the local community. West Windsor Plainsboro's children struggling with harassment 
can look to the district for help. Every school is equipped with an anti-bullying specialist and dedicated to providing support for students. Working parents can enroll their child in the extended day program. Information and fees are up online for the optional before and after school care. Local students have the chance to honor faculty members. Staff teacher appreciation and recognition awards are available anytime for a minimum $10 donation. This has been Shreya Singh with your 107.9 FM School and Community Flash. Last on the dial, first in your heart, 107.9 FM. on 107.9 FM. Okay, and remember how I was telling you before that I am definitely moving to Ikaria, Greece? Like, okay, forget WWP. I am going. Because, like, this place, like, they're just, like, known for having, like, long and healthy lives and, like, it just sounds awesome. Like, no one uses a working clock. Like, tell me that does, that's just not, like, perfect. I would love that. Then I would never have to worry about other people judging me for being a little bit late or anything because nobody knows what time it is anyway. Yeah, you could just be like, my body clock told me to come two and a half hours late. I was just, like, you know, I was just doing it the zen way or something. Like, I don't know. And, like, no one wakes up early. And, like, those are the really, like, really annoying alarm clocks. And you just want to, like, throw it out your window every morning. And, like, you don't have to do that anymore. Like, forget America. Like, okay, like, WWP should just start, like, adopt this. I think I should just, I can come to bio class when I, like, my, when my body's rhythm tells me to. I look forward to hearing you use that excuse. But you can also be like them and have a lot of gardening. So they get a lot of good, safe exercise, like, nothing too strenuous. Yeah, and like, you know how like our country's like really obsessed with like, oh my god, let's do like yoga and Zumba and like have all these really healthy foods like Lay's chips is like advertising about how they like pluck their own potatoes or whatever. Like this is even better. You can pluck your own potatoes and like, and like, you yeah, know, make your own potato chips. Like, yes, and they'll be super delicious and good for you. So this stuff is a lot of nature-y stuff. So let's go into some animals, speaking of nature, with our interesting pets. Laugh Track. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of interesting pets, I have some great ideas for you, Ruby. Like I like I really really think this will, these will work out for you. So I think a good Christmas present for you would be um, a piranha. I think you are absolutely crazy. <laughs> no, it'll, it would be great. You'll be like, oh my little baby piranha, let me feed you some food, and then it'll snap your hand off. Okay, well, that sounds really unpleasant, but I am a very loving person, so I want to give you a wallaby, which is a miniature kangaroo. No, my little wallaby. Like, oh, there's apparently also, like, tarantulas on this list. Apparently, they're pretty common. Like, like, yay, my little hairy spider, you're so cute, come for a walk with me. No, like, that's, like, I don't understand people. Like, why would you want these as pets? There's also, like, hissing cockroaches. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good, but I think you think everything is cute, so that works out. <laughs> But this has been our laugh track, only on 107.9 FM WPH in Princeton Junction. WWPH Princeton Junction. So yeah, it's been great on 107.9 FM. Yeah, that was that was yeah. <laughs> interesting. I learned all about your different pet tastes. Yes, and I saw that you really are not looking out for my interests. But we also had our best cupcakes in the area, so that was very yummy, and I'm super hungry now. Yeah. Oh, and of course EDP. We both got to recount our old memories, all those good old days of having those pony beads. <laughs> what a great show, I have to say. So this has been Ruby Shao and Marina Mantha on 107.9 FM WWPH in Princeton. Function. You've been watching Sneak Peek, a look at the type of programming featured daily on the Westwinds of Plainsboro High School Student Radio Station 107.9 FM. Sneak Peek is an exclusive student production from the Westwinds of Plainsboro High School TV station WWPH TV. I'm Amrita, 
And I'm Marina. Yeah, man. How are you doing, my Biba? Uh, senior year is so much harder than I ever what? thought it would be. Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's just like, uh, second semester is just like a lie. And like, you always have work and it's so stressful. And like, you have scholarships and you have a like AP tests and all that kind of stuff. Okay, oh, the only yeah. thing you should be doing is shopping. That is what Mr. <laughs> did all of her second semester senior year. Like literally every day she went shopping. I'm not even joking. I know. And the other thing that everyone seems to be doing is that they all seem to be like Snapchatting. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. During class, they'll all just be sitting there like, and it's like, <laughs> oh my God, you understand that I'm just looking at you and not paying attention because you're just so entertaining. To yeah. Me. It's funny because people have this idea in their head, right? They think that like Snapchatting is going to make them like popular or something or not popular, but like it makes them look cool. No, like you look dumb. Like, uh, like, like no, stop. But Stop. is that attractive? <laughs> it's just funny. Like, I don't understand the point. It's going to die because it's, like, so boring. It's just like die. Facebook. Yeah. The only thing... Okay, my sister... <laughs> Isn't it awkward people are friends with their parents? So, yes. Like, my parents find it awkward to be friends with their own children. Okay, so my sister tried... Um, accidentally friended my dad, and my dad was so happy. He sent... You know how, like, you get the email notification? My dad actually sent it to everybody. <laughs> he forwarded it to everyone. He was like, look! My daughter wants to be my friend. I rejected her. Yeah, I was like, Dad, that's not the point of Facebook, but okay. Okay, let me say what I'm rejecting. Google Glasses, because they're ugly. They are yeah. so ugly. Like, you guys don't understand. If you've ever seen a picture of them, they just, like, they just look weird. Like, look why like are you wearing them? I don't know. Like, okay, you can see the picture, and it's just, like, this weird band that goes yeah, across your face. There's no down. lenses, right? Or if there is, it covers one of your eyes. I'm like, Pirate. stop. Why are you doing that? Oh, man. Kim Kardashian wore them recently. Um, I think she looked mm -hmm. weird. I'm sorry, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, look at that. Look <laughs> at really that. They don't really add anything to her weird pregnant style. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's not the most flattering <laughs> in the world. And I don't know. I think they should be using, like, real glasses. Or, like, yeah, they should make them, like, look cool. Like, okay, like, if, if there was, like... Like the Google Glasses, like in like When Harry Met Sally, those would be cool. Like, those would oh be man, cool. yeah. Like if Sally had them, like she would be very attractive <laughs> in her Google Glasses. Like, yeah, yeah, man. Right. And if you're a librarian, you may be thinking, oh, books, technology doesn't apply to me. Wrong. You've got yeah. your librarian Google Glasses. Ooh. You can be Ooh. an attractive librarian. Yeah. Google with Google <laughs> Glasses, yeah, man. Or there's always the Ben Franklin down for you with his little like bifocals. And there's even, there's even, you know, oh, security Matrix. guards if you want to be those people. Or Matrix, man. Absolutely. I yeah. don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. Keanu pretty Reeves. fly. <laughs> Keanu Reeves had the Google glasses. He you did know. have the Google glasses. But stay tuned because Styling with Sammy is coming next only on Studio 107. It's an area where an immense amount of people are suffering. You hear that this is the first time in history where the United States has declared it a genocide and yet not taken any real action to stop it. In terms of that, it's very easy because if you hear about that, of course you're not gonna be okay with it. It's human life. You know, how much more of an interest do you need? Allie Gideon speaking for Stand, working to make this a better world. A message from WWPH TV. You're back on Studio 107 with Styling with Sammy, and this is Sammy. <laughs> so yeah, okay, apparently I can't dress, so Sammy has to teach me how to dress, so girl, give me your tips. Okay, so thank you, Amrita, first of all. And so it's time to start shifting our fashion gears from, you know, winter and cold weather and sweaters and all that, all that jazz to, um, to spring, which is more like florals and bright colors and things like that. So starting off, we can, I guess we'll start like kind of casual, you know, and then our work our way up the fancy scale. Um, so starting, you can wear like, I personally really am a fan of these flats, or you could wear like these kind of little booties too, because- They're cute, they're like, all like floral. Right, like, they're, they're colorful. Like flowers inside. Right, they, they're colorful and they have um, the bright colors also, so those really are easy to incorporate into any outfit, like this one, which is just, you know, plain jeans and a t-shirt. There's okay. nothing wrong with it, but it's just, it's Me easy either. to, you know, dress up and make springy. I, I I'm see, not trying to I offend see your you. negative connotation, man. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, so then you could, you could um, add, for just more of like a casual outfit, you could add just a little, like, any color cardigan or yeah. something like this. 
like a little red riding hood, man. Yeah. Super or, cute. Um, and then, you know, adding something to your oh, hair, you could add like a flower crown. Okay, where would you wear this? Okay, like, I feel like you could wear this like Coachella if you go to Coachella, but like where else would you wear this? You can like, really wear it anywhere. No. You just have to have the confidence to wear it, you know what I mean? That's the thing. But if you're not really into that, you, you still want the flowers and stuff, you could remove the flower crown and you can just add like a little, like just a little bitty accessory to the hair. It just kind of clips in or something like that. That's super cute. I like this. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, you could take that off and you could uh, you could put on like a bandana or something that has the flowers it's on like it. It's like Rosie the Riveter. Yes, exactly. You yes, could be like woman empowered. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, that, that matches with the white. And then you could also um, add a scarf to it like this, something like that. And you can wear that for like, I don't know, like a like a trendy trip to the supermarket or like going oh, to the mall God, or something no, like that. <laughs> yeah. If you're Sammy, you could wear this to the supermarket. <laughs> Anybody can. Um, and then, so moving our way up the fancy scale. Okay, that um, is really bright. No, but that you make it... That is really, really bright. <laughs> no, but I mean, you can make it less obnoxious like you and like less just... bright. Um, so, like, you know, hold that up to yourself. It's like highlighter color. Yeah. Well, it's not that bad. I mean, you could add, you could, you could like, keep on the, the bandana because then, you know, you've got the pink and the pink, but it makes it a little less casual. Um, or you could add a necklace or something because that makes it a little nicer also, but then you've still got, like, the bright colors and, you know, things like that, which I... I personally think it's super cute, but you don't even have to use this blue necklace to do like something orange or something green. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, exactly. I like that. Yeah, and then um, you know you could. I personally am a fan of just wearing like just like a chambray shirt, which is just jean, like over it. If you're wearing a darker jean, that way you're not like so like too denim on jeans. denim and things like that, which bothers I don't me do a lot. Jeans. But not a no, let's say like you're going to like a fancy dinner or something where jeans are, you can still get away with wearing jeans, but you know, you still want to make it nice. And oh, I am a fan girl. of this kind of cardigan because you know, the little, the little print, the little colors, um, it definitely dresses it up a lot. And then you can add any kind of necklace, I'm all tangled and whatnot. You can wear like all five of them if you want. Um, so like you could wear this one on it, or you could wear like the big jewels again, which I'm a fan of. And then you could top it off with a bunch pair of sunglasses in any of the shoes. Oh man, these are so, like hippie sunglasses, I like them. So bing, bang, bang boom. There you go. Okay, and you will be back later on Studio 107. We have an interview coming up, so stay tuned for more. He plays sports, gets good grades, and is headed off to NYU in the fall. And he happens to be the executive director of his very own charity. Here in the studio with me today is Akash Goyal. Hi, a pleasure to be here. So Akash, tell me a little bit about your charity. So basically, HCL World is a charity that takes obsolete medical equipment from America and sends it to third world countries in need. And it's not exactly typical that high school students our age are really concerned about what's going on in the world. So what exactly got you motivated or inspired to do this? Um, I actually took a trip to India in 2010 with my family. And this time we went to more not wealthy parts of it. And so on one of our road trips, we were driving and some of the homeless people had been knocking on our doors for money. And their fingers ended at their knuckles. It didn't, they didn't have the rest of their fingers. And so some, uh, just looking at that made me really like, this is terrible, something's wrong, and I really wanted to do something about that. And I was at the right age where I was able to. I can do something about that, and I made, I've, been, I've been making a difference. And that kind of realization and passion is so great, but even with those two things, a lot of the times, you know, we have so much work and so much stuff in our life that makes it so hard to accomplish other things. Support from my family and friends really helps me get through this. Not only does support from family and friends help me though, but being that a lot of my relatives are in the medical field, that also is a huge help because I don't have to make formal presentations to hospitals saying, look, I need this for this country because my relatives have been a part of the whole process. They can just make a request from their hospitals. 
And I always find that having that kind of support or having some kind of support team um, behind me not only makes it easier on me, but ends up making me more successful. Oh, absolutely. It, it just, it doesn't make you, you're not alone. You, as long, you're with someone else. Yeah, and you're going to be with quite a few other people in college when you head off to NYU. Um, so how are you hoping to accomplish or continue your passion in college? Well, I'm going to be majoring in finance and accounting, and those are two fields that are essential when you're running a company. And so I'm going to use my knowledge in, that I learned in college to better the company and make it more efficient and try to find better rates for shipping products or being able to make presentations because my relatives aren't going to be there for me every single time. And like you said, you know, not always your family are going to be with you, but I'm sure that you'll be able to make tons of contacts at college and all those. Yeah, there, the, being in the city alone is just going to be great. There's, gonna, there's always going to be people who can help me out. Now, having people and having resources and all these other things don't really mean much as if there isn't something driving you. So what moment would you say really inspired you or gave you the strength to keep doing this? Yeah, well, one moment that was really, it was my first shipment I sent to uh, Cameroon. And his name was Wilson. He was a stranger. He just emailed me and showed documentation as to he was uh, deserving of a donation. So I got the supplies that he wanted and sent them to him and he actually sent me an email back saying thank you and three a couple words that really got to me was may god bless you from a complete stranger to be like a well-wisher upon me really just made me re reinforced my reason of why i'm doing this because i'm doing this to make a difference and people are noticing this difference and how are you planning to make a difference in the future you know what changes are you going to be uh, making and how exactly are you planning on expanding well just a, a neat fact I want to throw in there is that in the past 10 years or so, the company has donated over $5 million worth of equipment. So a future goal of mine would be to donate within the next 10 years, I would look to double that to make it $10 million. As to how I'm going to do that, well, I look to use some of my knowledge I'm going to learn in college to reduce costs and get more donations at the same time. And obviously it's been an incredible journey that you've taken from a trip to India that started your whole passion um, to becoming the executive director of your very own charity that was started by your grandfather. It's been inspiring and I know that you're going to, uh, going to go on to great things, um, not just in college, but continuing your charity work outside of college as well, benefiting the people um, of the world countries. Thank you. And it's also been a pleasure for our listening audience. Stay tuned to Studio 107. We've had situations where we've had parts break, we've left something in, in my garage that we should have brought with us, and the other team step up and give it to you. We have a word for it, and first it's cooperation, which is competition and cooperation put together. So we made up a word, because that's what it is. We're cooperating with one another while we're competing with them. And that's something that you don't see. You know, you don't see people running across the field during a football game and helping the other side. But in FIRST Robotics, you see it all the time. Welcome back to Studio 107. I'm Amrita and I'm with my little mubby Bamiba. <laughs> Dude, I was watching that interview. That was intense. I, I know, didn't it like change your perspective on a lot of that things? That is one thing I've learned in this show today. I need to change my priorities. Like, girl, you have got to stop Snapchatting because it's not attractive and you have got to start doing something more worthwhile with your life. <laughs> oh my goodness, I know. Like, the whole social media thing, I mean, I think it was pretty much like I don't know, like, you know, just stop, like, stop posting weird things, stop taking weird pictures of yourself, yes, you, you know who you are, you need to stop, <laughs> you need to. Yeah, it's like Kim Kardashian with the Google glasses, like, she needs to stop, because that is not attractive, like, she is pretty, and even she can pull off the whole pirate headband look or whatever she's going for. But I think what yeah. we established is that basically nobody looks good with the Google glasses, like, yeah. you saw those things, Yeah, they they're got, not nice. Yeah. They gotta start it off with, like, when Harry met Sally or something, like, they gotta meet our approval, then, <laughs> then they'll get good. But I mean, hey, you also learned some other styling tips from Sammy. Yeah, I did. Wear flowers in your hair and little like bun patches and like flower blazers. Anyway, this has been Amrita and Marina on Studio 107. Stay tuned for more on WWPH TV. Oh, my God.
Oh, my God.